Hello, welcome to this next uh, tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be doing a, a kind of workflow. I'm going to simplify it a bit, but this is the general workflow that I follow uh, when I'm making a prop um, for a, a set of some description. So, first thing I do is get some references together, and I've got Pure Ref on the other screen. Let me bring it over. And I've got two kinds of reference uh, I've got a dimensional reference and a, like a visual reference. So, I like to get a dimensional reference because you know, I've made many tables in my past without ref dimensional references and found that I made them maybe two inches too short or, you know, six inches too high or twice as big as it needed to be. Um, and when that happens, all the other parts of the set then, you know, don't fit and the visual doesn't fit. You know, if you model a table, uh, which everybody has seen, of course, um, you know, people know what tables look like they know how tall they are they know how wide they are not you know um, actually nobody knows to the millimeter um, but you know they know what a table should look like so what I like to do is get a reference now so I don't make that mistake again uh, so as you can see we're going to be making a barrel for this one uh, which I not don't commonly come across so getting a nice uh, dimensional reference is very good here so I've got some smaller ones here and some larger ones underneath, but I'm going to do a smaller one, uh, maybe a 20 litre or a 10, 20 litre, I think. Um, so my visual references there are not for me to copy them. You know, I'm not copying, you know, any of these particular barrels. Uh, what I want to do is get an idea of what they look like, you know, what the metal looks like, what the wood looks like, you know, and you'll find a wide variety, but I've tried to pick ones that are kind of close together and kind of fit what I'm visualizing in my mind so let's uh, let's get into blender so uh, just before I start now I'm on blender 3.1.2 um, so if you're um, using that or above everything should be fine if not you know it might be a feature that's not in an earlier version okay so we're going to start with a general scene and then of course we'll delete the default cube and now we'll go to add and mesh and we want a cylinder so first thing i want to do on here is just pull up this little bottom uh, add cylinder pop-up and this gives me all of my dimensions and my vertices so first of all dimensions then so we've got our reference and my reference says the radius of a 20 litre barrel uh, well the diameter is 11 so the radius is 5.5 inches and the depth of the height rather is uh, 15 and a quarter inches so 15.25 inches and that's terrific if I zoom in a little bit I, I can see that 32 sides here is probably a little much for this we are going to subdivide this yeah we're going to want it to be able to subdivide and if I have too many or too much geometry to start with you know that can be a problem so I'm actually going to take that down to 16 just to give me a starting point uh, which is quite you know which is really low you know in reality okay so once I've done that I'll just click off and that will set that and then with it selected I'm going to press the tab key and we're going to put the belly in uh, so the curve so with nothing selected I'm just going to click the loop cut and then left click and that will put a cut down the middle of my barrel so now I can expand that out. So if I press the S key for scale, I can move my mouse until it comes out a bit. Now, it's best to over exaggerate this a bit because we're going to bevel it next. And when we bevel it, the, the sides are all going to come in a little bit. So to bevel with the edge, edges selected, let me go to edge mode, and make sure they're selected and come off the cut tool because otherwise I'm just going to put another cut in. Uh, so control and B for um, barrel and then I can move my uh, mouse until it gets to where I want it to be now I've only got um, one cut in there at the moment I'm going to want four because uh, that will leave me a line down the center which is perfect now I just want to extend this up a bit and we'll use the width offset I'm just going to click 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 until they're about even 
they're a little bit for smaller at the top and the bottom but I'm not too concerned about that uh, perhaps I'll bring it down one yes that's better that's a bit more even the ones in the middle are a bit wide but um, a bit wider than the rest but that's okay okay so let me click off that to finish that off and now we have a barrel shape so that's the general shape you know we've used a reference to get our dimensions you know you can see it looks like a barrel even if it's a bit kind of angular uh, what we'll do next is we'll start to refine the shape and add our subdivision so that we can uh, see what it looks like okay so i will talk to you then Okay, so a um, bit more shaping, and first of all, I want to go into polygon selection mode, and I'll select the bottom, or the top and the bottom rather. Now, what I want to do is put a little lip in here, because I can see in all my references there is a little lip at the top of each of these barrels. So, with those selected, I press I for inset, and they just move in ever so slightly. Uh, so that looks okay and then we want to extrude so uh, for this one i want to extrude along normals so if i change this option here and then grab our little um, drag handle i can just pull that down whoops a bit more than that i'm going to undo that one there we go and then redo my inset edit redo there we go just pull that down ever so slightly and then click off the tool to cancel it and I'm going to select the just normal cursor up there to make sure I don't inset again because I yeah I'll quite often do that I quite often use a tool forget I've got it active and then do it again and that can often have unforeseen consequences because the you know if I did an inset again but an inset at zero it would add geometry but I wouldn't be able to see it and then I'd over have overlapping things and that can cause problems okay so with that done I'm going to select the top and the bottom again and this time I'm going to inset with an eye I'm just going to pull it in a little bit and then select the top one on its own and we're going to merge that all together so press the M key which is merge vertex that wasn't the M key sorry about that uh, M and then at center so select m at center there we go so now i've capped off the tops now some people will do that some people won't do that it's my preference because i'm old and that's what i've always done um but you know it, it's less important these days depend depending upon the render engine you're targeting uh, you might find that um, some render engines don't like having engons some do uh, I prefer not to take the risk and I don't have them <laughs> okay so that's our basic shape and as I said earlier this is very low poly and I want to refine this shape now what you would normally do now is add a subdivision modifier so if I go to the modifiers click add modifier and subdivision surface it will apply uh, a low poly cage but it will subdivide underneath you can see the low poly cage is this dark uh, dark edges area and then underneath it's showing what it will look like and you can see that it's kind of deformed it a little bit everything's gone a little bit soft and what we just need to do is add some geometry to it to maintain the sharpness of those edges so you know corners look square instead of you know rounded like they are now so in edge mode I'm going to double click on this here and this here oops there we go and I can't see the one underneath it but that's okay I'll do that in a second so with those two selected I can bevel these with a control and a B and then move my cursor and then if you can't get it sort of exactly on when you click you'll get this dialog if you don't get the dialogue it will be uh, openable down here uh, I only want two steps two segments and for my width uh, I'm going to switch measurement styles now and go two millimeters 
there we go so when I click off that we should see that that has uh, hardened up which is perfect so we do that on the bottom as well uh, control B uh, just click then type in two millimeters two segments and that should do the job now it's hiding um, my uh, inner geometry here the inner cage so what I want to do is turn this off for a second and then I can double click on that inner I'll do the bottom at the same time and then control B oops I'll just click type in two millimeters I've got two segments I'll just click off that and that will do it and when I turn this back on again it will visualize properly and I can see that I'm all shaped up now and that's part of the you know the joys of subdivision modeling it's knowing where to put the geometry to keep the shape you want you know if you um, have too much geometry you know it can be bad if you have too little it can be bad and sometimes it's just about putting the geometry in the right place and if you apply the subdivision um, modifier to your model you can see where it's deforming and then it'll give you a good idea of you know where you need to add some geometry to maintain the shape you want okay so that is that i'm just going to update my viewport to two there so i can see what it would look like at two and that's pretty pretty smooth i like it okay so next we're going to have a look at um uv mapping um so i've got a bit of a trick here for um, this particular barrel um and yes i will talk to you then okay then so we're going to uv map now now we, we are going to continue modeling but i want to uv map this bit because this bit is done and if i mess it up later after i've modeled then you know it just makes it harder so what i want to do is cut the top off and cut the bottom off first so to make that easier i'm going to click this uh button here which takes me just back into edit mode so i don't get the preview and i want to select this line around here and the same on the bottom so i'll have to hold shift down and double click there too and then i can right click and mark as seen there we go so now in poly mode if i select there and press l it will select up to the seam so if you don't have these options here this select linked um, just click on that to open it up and then select seam and i want to hide that bit and i want to do the same on the bottom so select poly just point at it and press l make sure it's to seam and then press hide and now we've hidden all the the bits that we've done properly or done so far so because this is a barrel the barrel is made up of different planks i don't want to unwrap this in one piece i want to unwrap it per plank so i'm going to double click on that one there that one there that one there just keep going around whoops sometimes i sort of do them in groups rather than trying to get all of them done because i get mixed up there we go however you want to do it you could select them all or you could do it one at a time or a few at a time whatever works for you whoops did i get the right one yep yeah, there we go and the last one so right click mark c so if i press now alt and h that will unhide the rest of my model and now i'm going to pop into the uv editing room and i'm just going to select everything and then um, make sure i've got everything over here selected so just press a and then right click and unwrap and now i should get a quite a nice map i want all of these balls to be pointing in the same direction because they are um, the texture is direction important or direction dependent rather if i've got some going vertical 
then the grain of my wood texture is going to go across the short way. If I have them horizontal, it will go the long way, or vice versa, depending upon the direction of your texture. So just make sure they're all going the right way. And I just want to pack these now because I've got very little space between these and I'll need a little bit for my texturing process. So I'll go UV and pack islands. You may find it reorients, but just make sure that everything's in the right direction. And then in the pack islands option, uh, let's go 0 0.1. Oh, that's way too much, 0 0.01. There we go. Now we've got a little bit of distance between our islands. Now that's helpful because, you know, when you texture, you tend to get bleed over the edges. And if you bleed over the edge of one island into another island, you know, you can make your texturing look a bit crazy. Okay, so that's good. Everything's all in the right direction. Everything's working well. Uh, these are kind of not really directional, so I'm not too worried about the, the caps. And I should be able to get quite a nice um, texture out of this map. Okay, so that's the initial uh, mapping. Uh, what we'll do in the next video, let me just press dot to focus in. Um, what we'll do is model on the uh, the straps on here, the, the metal bands. Okay, so let me turn that back on and then uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, so I want to make the bands for this, but I don't want to change the underlying geometry. I don't want to change the barrel, I just want to add the bands. So what we're going to do is take a copy of uh, the outside of this barrel and then uh, amend it. I'm going to turn off that preview there. And now I'm going to just in poly mode, double click right next to one of the vertical lines and that will select the loop round. Whoops. There we go. And when you've got them all selected, press Shift and D for duplicate. And if you move your mouse, you'll see you've got a copy. But if you then right click, it will drop it exactly where it started. So Shift H to hide everything else. And now we're going to extract some bands from this. So in edge mode, I'm going to double click on each of these lines that I want a band to be around. And then Control B to bevel and just draw that out a little bit and I think that might be a little thick so let's just take it down a bit whoops actually it seems a bit sensitive so I'm going to type 0. Point, whoops, 0. 0.25 inches in there we go perhaps a little more than that uh, 0. 0.3 inches yep that seems good okay so now I want to delete everything else so we can go to select and invert and then go to poly mode whoops should have gone to poly mode first there we go poly mode first and then select and invert and delete and faces and now we can extrude this out so i'll just press a to select everything and then from my extrude here i'm just going to make sure i'm on extrude along normals and then i'll grab my handle and pull it out a bit now, I don't want it to pull out too much. I'm not making a cartoony barrel here. Um, I'm guessing about 0.125 inches, about an eighth of an inch, something along those lines. And then click off to deselect the tool and then select the uh, just the move box or whatever you want to, uh, to do that. Right, so uh, let's go Alt H and we can see that they fully fit on there. And when I subdivide, they should stick quite nicely. Uh, however, we do want to firm up the edges here. So I'll just turn that off for a second to make it easier. And then I'm going to select the top and the bottom on each of these and we'll build them. There we go. So it's control and B, just move it a little bit. And then I'm going to type in uh, one millimeter this time, just to give it a little bit of a smoother aspect. And that's good. Okay, so we have a barrel. 
And if I uh, turn on the preview again, we can see what it looks like more or less. Um, okay, so what we'll do next is just assign some materials to it, but we'll also delete out the geometry on the bands that we don't need so that uh, you know we're not being wasteful. Um, and I've got to UV map the bands, but we'll do that in a sec. Okay, so I'll talk to you in the next bit. Okay, so uh, if I select the whole barrel, give it a, a material, let's just select there and press L. Uh, this time I just want to use normal, so it selects all the geometry connected to it. There we go. So with that done, I'm going to go to the uh, materials tab down the bottom, at new, give it a name, um, barrel, and then click assign to assign that to it. And then I'm going to press H to hide it, and then A to select everything else. Use the plus next to the materials to create a new one. Click the new button, and I'll call this bands and assign that to the selected geometry there we go so now we've got our materials and i also want to delete this inner geometry so in edge mode uh, i'm going to select each of the edges down the middle on the inside so i can't see them at the moment so i'll go to my modifier and turn off the preview and just select each of those This is a bit of a trick um, to, you know, easily select all those in, inner polygons. So control and then plus on the numpad to expand your selection. And then go to poly mode, delete and delete faces. And they should go now. And then uh, what do we do? We'll Alt-H to show everything else. And then turn the preview back on just to make sure everything's still matching which it is terrific now i want to uv map the the bands themselves so if i go to the materials tab and select the bands material and then click select it will select all of the geometry in that zone so i'm going to go shift and h to hide everything else <coughs> excuse me and then we'll go to um probably the side view so three on the keypad. Now I want to select all of the edges going down here, but I can't at the moment because I can't see the ones behind. If I select like that, it's just going to be the ones the camera can see. So if I press Shift and Z now, I'll go into X-ray mode. Oops. And then I can select down there and you'll see I've selected both sides. Um, you'll also notice, actually, <laughs> I'd kind of forgotten, uh, that these have picked up the um, the seams from the previous. So I need to clear those first. So just press A, right click, and clear seam. And then we'll go back and select those ones down the, the side there. So three for side view, left mouse drag box down, and then right click, mark seam. And now we'll pop into the UV editor press A over here, A over here, right click and unwrap. And we should get some nice, or pretty nice uh, bands out of it. Uh, some of them are a bit more bent than the others, but I'm not too uh, concerned about that in this case. Uh, we could also uh, change our type to conformal instead of angle based. Uh, let's try conformal, correct aspect, no. No, I think that's going to be about it. And frankly, it's not worth doing. It's not worth messing about too much. The directional grain on this isn't going to matter that as much as it would on the wood. If the wood was bent, I would correct it, but it's not, you know, but for this metal, which is going to be more grainy than directional, um, I'm, I'm happy with it as it is. Okay, so with that said, that's okay. We'll go and do a pack. So UV and pack islands it's come out just as it is that's fine uh, so that's all done so essentially um, we have a barrel now so I'm going to go back here and press 
uh, shift and H well not shift and H control and H alt and H rather <laughs> and then shift Z to turn the x-ray off and there it is now it's all nicely unwrapped it's all unwrapped you know so that I can texture it nicely um, the only thing to do really is to decide how high or low I want the the model to be uh, so if I go to the um, the sub D uh, tab sorry I'm uh, <laughs> not, not, not on top form today um, so I've got it subdividing twice and it's going to give me quite a lot of geometry and and here is it's a question of is this a hero prop or is this a background prop if it's a background prop you, you get away with less geometry because it's off in the distance you're not going to see it very much um, so you know it's not going to be in focus there may be depth of field on it you'll probably get away with a lower level uh, if it's a hero prop which is something that's going to be much closer to the camera such that you can you know really see it you may you may want more geometry uh, the other option is you might want both in which case you might want to do this twice once for a low poly version which you'll put in the background and then once for a high poly version which will come to the foreground but you'd use the same map essentially the same um you know you'll use this just use it twice uh, so on the off chance that i do want to use it twice i'm going to save this now so i'll go save and uh, we'll just call it barrel base so i know that i can open it and change it if i want to uh, otherwise i'm going to assume it's a hero prop and i'm going to apply this modifier and to do that i'm going to have to go to tab i'm going to right click and smooth shade it so that i get rid of the faceting and then i'm going to apply our modifier and now we have our nicely modeled nicely in proportion nicely uv'd um you know with zones barrel okay so that's the the modeling part of this workflow um, in the next part which will be a second video i will do the texturing part uh, so uh, i hope you found this useful um, and i will hopefully talk to you in the next video